from a large data set. How can we summarize the values into a dynamic and interactive table using this scroll bar tool right here, where we can move up or move down the visualization of the data that we have in our data set. It's a very simple solution to create here in Excel. And the interesting thing is, you can use this solution into your presentations, reports, dashboards in Excel. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video on how can we create a dynamic and interactive Excel table using this scroll bar tool that we have within the developer tab in Excel. So let's find out how can we do it step by step from scratch. Let's go. The first thing that we need to have in Excel is a data set because from the data set, we can create analysis. And then from the data set, we can move on and enable the developer tab because here within the developer tab, we have insert and then the scroll bar. That is the two that we're gonna use. So click in the home tab and then in any blank space, you can right click and go to customize the ribbon. You can choose, instead of using popular commands, you go to main tabs, you can choose developer, add, and then okay, that's it. So this is how you can enable the developer tab in Excel. Now let's take a look on what is the data that I have within my data set and what is the analysis that I want to create here from the data set. I have the order ID, the date, the brand, the product, and on and on and on. But let's say the only three informations that I want to use can be the date and the product name and also the total price. So they are those three different informations that I want to use in my analysis. Okay, so that I, now that I know what I'm going to need to do, let's move on and create here a new sheet in Excel. Click on this plus sign. And this sheet, I'm going to call it, right click, rename, maybe analysis. Then I can press enter. I'm going to move up maybe to the cell B2. And I want to start with the headers that I want to use. The headers, maybe it's going to be the easiest thing to do because equal sign, we're just going to need to use the equal sign, equal sign. And then we can move back to the scroll bar or the, the data set. And I want to select the titles that I want to use, such as the date. And then I press enter. Okay. This is very important to use the equals sign because if someone or if I update the data set and change the headers, I'm going to still be able to see the headers changes here. Okay. So it's going to automatically update for me. Equal sign again. The third information that I want to use is the product enter. And the third one is going to be the total price enter. Okay. I'm done. Let me just increase the column C a little. Just click in between one column and another hold and drag to the right. I want you to do the same thing to the column D and now to the column B like this. Now, in order to bring it back as a result, the values that I have within the date, I want to use the equal sign, the index function in Excel. The index function in Excel can take a branch such as the entire column and bring it back as a result, a specific row, such as the row, the second row, where we have the first information that we need. So let's go back to the scroll bar, spreadsheet or the data set. And I want to select here the entire column B. That way I'm going to click over the letter B. And then I want to click in the formula bar, press comma. And as the, the second argument, I have the row number. I don't want to return the first row because the first row is equal to the header. I want to return the second, second row and then the third one, the fourth one, the fifth one, and one and one and on. So this is what I'm going to do. And I want to input the number two to get back as a result, the second information, the second row, number two, and then enter. Okay. So as you can see, now I have the date. Yeah, weird format. So let's change the format and use the home tab, general and uh, short date as the format. Okay, now it's working. And if I go to this function again, one, two, and I, instead of using the number two, that is giving me as result January 1st of 2024, I change it to maybe 100. Let's see what's going to happen here. Enter. Now I have a different date, January 14th of 2024, for example. So a different date. And this is what is going to happen when I change the row number criteria. But instead of manually change the row number criteria, maybe we can input the row number criteria off to the side, maybe here in the cell. Uh, so let's just uh, start with the number two, because the number two, as we saw before, corresponding to the first information that we need. And now I can make it dynamic. Instead of using this manually inputted number within the formula, I can read it off this information using the delete button and select here the cell that I have to the right. Enter. And if I change this value to 100, maybe enter, as you can see, the date is going to automatically change for me. We're going to also input here the scroll bar to automatically change 
the number and then automatically change the results that we have within the index formula. But for now, let's stick with the second column that we have, that is the product. And again, equal sign index function. One, two to select as the array. We're going to basically do the same thing as before, but uh, this time I want to select the product. Trauma. Let me go back to the analysis and I want to select the number like this. Enter. The total price equals sign index. Double click to select. As the array, I want to use the total price columns or the column G, comma. And I want to select the number that I have underneath the formula. So let me click out, maybe here. Click, hold and drag the selection underneath the formula. Enter, okay. If I change the number uh, to, for example, enter, as you can see, I can uh, automatically change the product and uh, all the other values. So, okay. Now, let me change here the price and I uh, use the dollar sign like this. And uh, yeah, I think it's okay. Now, let's go to the developer tab and I insert the scroll bar. I can click hold and drag down to make the area of the scroll bar. If you, let's say, made an area that I think it's too small or too large, you can click in this small circles, hold and drag out or E to change the size of the this shape. Right click here in this shape and then I can go to format control. I want you to use as the current value. Maybe it's going to be number zero, it doesn't matter. The minimum value is going to be two because if I have something that is less than two, maybe we're going to have some issues because it's going to be, let's say, one or zero because one is equal to the header and zero is equal to nothing. So let's stick with two as the minimum, as the threshold. As the maximum value, maybe I can use 999 or 1000, 1000. And as the cell link, I can click in the upper arrow and select this cell right here, down arrow, and then I can click OK. Now, whenever I move down this scroll bar, as you can see, I can change this number right here. And also all the other results is, gonna, is going to be automatically updated for us. And uh, also I can click in, this, in the arrows, up and down. Yeah, it's working. Now let's do uh, another change here. I don't want you to just stick with one row of to in my analysis. I want to create many different rows. And to do so, I can continue to create this sequence. So if I have here 35, in the next row, I'm going to have 36, 37, 38, and on and on. So underneath it, I'm going to input the equal sign and just a simple math I'm going to do. The previous value added to one unity. Enter. Now I click again back in the previous cell. In the bottom right corner, click, hold, and drag down. As you can see, now we have a lot of different uh, criteria for all the rows that we need. And if I select all those three first cells where we did the function, I can again, in the bottom right corner, click, hold, and drag down to match with the values that we have here. I can also make this column a little bit smaller, like this, and take the scroll bar and put just over or above uh, the numbers that I have underneath it. Now I can select again everything here uh, in my data, and then I can go to the home tab and ally everyone in the middle and also ally everyone in the center, like this. I can select the headers, put everything in bold, change the background color maybe to a blue one, and use as the font color a white one, like this. Let me increase just a little bit this scroll bar. Ah, okay. Yeah, I think we're done. So now everything is working. If I move the scroll bar down, as you can see, I can change the information that I'm seeing. And if I move it up, I can also change the information. Basically, we create a scroll that goes, that takes some information up or down, it depends on the how much we move on the scroll bar. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video on how can we create a dynamic and interactive scroll bar here in Excel using the developer tab. It's very simple to do. And of course, you can use this solution to into your presentations or reports or dashboards in Excel. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you have any questions or any suggestions to the next videos, let me know, comment down below. And I see you tomorrow as every day has a new video. I see you there.